scandal surrounding Harvey Weinstein represents another watershed moment in the culture war. But from a wider perspective, it's just another symptom of Hollywood's terminal decline. More and more people are beginning to get jaded by popular culture. Hollywood just had its worst US box office summer season in 25 years. A 16% drop in revenue compared to last year. In the US, less tickets were sold in 2016 compared to 2002. Despite there being almost double the number of movies playing in 2016 and a higher population. Americans are bored out of their minds and they're voting with their dollar. Studios once felt they could take more risks because even if a movie was a box office flop, DVD sales could recoup the loss. That safety net's disappearing fast. DVD sales are plummeting because Netflix and other on-demand services are eating up that market. That puts the onus on the studio not to take any risks. That's why there seems to be such a lack of diversity, such a paucity of new ideas. Everything's just a recycled franchise of superhero sequels because they know that brand recognition is always going to play well in the foreign market, mainly China. But now even those movies are starting to flop too. Everything is so stale, unimaginative and tedious. But there's another reason for Hollywood's decline. With the political climate so polarised, many on the right are boycotting Hollywood because it's now become the primary vehicle for left-wing narratives. Make no mistake about it, this is a backlash against social engineering that is now prevalent in modern movies. Even the far-left LA Times is asking, has Hollywood lost touch with American values? Look at Jennifer Lawrence, for example. Days after she goes on a bizarre anti-Trump global warming rant. We voted, and it was really startling. Her new movie bombs and she announces she's quitting acting for two years. And yes, the primary reason is because the movie sucked. But with anti-Trump hysteria running rampant, studios, directors and actors increasingly see it as their role to become culture warriors. While pleasing the gods of political correctness by obsessing about diversity and gender balance. Top film critics with huge influence like Owen Gleiberman are openly calling on movies and awards shows to get even more more political. Amplifying far-left axioms has taken precedence over and above what should be their only concern. Making a good frigging movie. Conservative actors in Hollywood have been shunned for decades. James Woods famously said he never expected to work in Hollywood again after criticising Obama. I'm routinely contacted by actors who have been fired or lost roles because their conservative beliefs were outed or because they voted for Trump. Being conservative in Hollywood is akin to being gay in the 1950s. They literally have to create clandestine secret societies just to be able to express their beliefs without fear of punitive measures. The group is called Friends of Abe, named after Abraham Lincoln, and it's made up of 1,500 conservative members of the entertainment industry. They gather for things like meals and drinks and to learn about the political Political process. We see the same thing with TV. Despite good ratings, ABC cancelled Tim Allen's last man standing with Allen making it clear why they took that decision. I said there's nothing more dangerous to me, especially in this climate, than a funny, uh, likable conservative. That was the most dangerous thing. That Because he was mitigated on the show by a family of well, women that ha had different opinions. Yeah. But the guy was a likable guy and really was a principled guy just about yeah. work and ethics and all this stuff. I think there's nothing more dangerous right now than a likable conservative. But then look at late night TV. The less they focus on comedy and the more they focus on spouting left wing talking points, the further their ratings plummet. All of these shows combined can barely get 8 million viewers. Jay Leno used to pull in almost that on his own. Could it possibly have anything to do with the fact that all these men share the same bland stance on every single issue and that one show is barely any different from the next Everybody comes to the 1970s is widely acknowledged by film buffs as the best decade for consistently high quality movies why because directors were given the freedom to experiment the directors had the power, not the studio. Their main focus was narrative and character development, not whether the cast ticked enough diversity boxes, not whether they genuflected forcefully enough to prevailing left-wing dogma. Now those factors are paramount, the quality of movies is noticeably declining. On the flip side, movies and TV shows that don't bow 
to identity politics. Thought police are becoming more popular. Over the last five years, we've seen a rash of successful throwback style TV shows that have at their core the rediscovery of stereotypically masculine traits. Hunting, guns, cars. Now that's starting to cross over into movies. Look at the new Kingsman film. Three white men, God forbid, play the lead roles. How rare would that be now in Hollywood? Look at the first Kingsman. The baddie is an insane environmentalist who wants to save the planet by culling the human race. When you get a virus, you get a fever. That's the human body raving at core temperature to kill the virus. Planet Earth works the same way. Global warming is the fever. Mankind is the virus. Do you really think the same people who bestowed Leo Private Jet DiCaprio with an Oscar so he had a platform to drone on about climate change would ever allow that depiction in a mainstream Hollywood production? That's not to say Kingsman is overtly political. It isn't. But it definitely has anti-Hollywood anti-Silicon Valley populist strains. Don't take my word for it, The Guardian, which is hardly Breitbart.com, acknowledged that its success was partly due to its populist disposition. And look at the outcome. Despite being panned by the critics and by establishment lefty film reviewers, when it came to the box office, Kingsman 2 outperformed a string of Hollywood blockbusters, including Pirates of the Caribbean and Wonder Woman. Why was it panned by the critics? Because the director, Matthew Vaughan, accurately talks about how Hollywood is in crisis, and they despise him for it. The success of Kingsman amongst ordinary punters suggests that he's right to play the contrarian. We don't have a bunch of Hollywood suits telling us what to do, said Vaughan. If we did, I promise you wouldn't be liking the movie. There's clearly an appetite for classical authenticity represented by Kingsman, and a growing distaste for dogmatic virtue signalling represented by mainstream Hollywood. But in terms of mass entertainment, it's not just Hollywood that people are turning away from. The 2017 VMAs, a relentless rhetorical vomit fest of anti-Trump pearl clutching. If we were to all stand up united as one, our impact, it would be <laughs> Drew the lowest ratings in MTV's history. Its viewership has been declining for years. The Emmy Awards, during which Stephen Colbert repeatedly sniped at Trump throughout his opening monologue, also had its worst result ever in the key viewing demographic. We see the same phenomenon in sports. ESPN, which seems to be transforming from a sports network into some kind of social justice activist hybrid, has lost 7.4% of its subscribers in just two years. Its average total views have dropped 19.4% percent since 2014. Those drops are partly due to ESPN jumping on every identity politics bandwagon that comes along. Case in point, ESPN rebranded its sports center show to include political debate. Same result, they lost viewers. Same with the NFL. Since the take a knee controversy, ratings are down. The NFL has already lost millions of viewers since last year over the same issue. A new poll shows that 80% of Americans want less politics during sporting events. Recall the huge sigh of relief when Lady Gaga's halftime Super Bowl performance didn't include anything political. A clear majority of Americans say they're watching less football this year, with 69% saying it's because they're sick of, quote, players using the NFL as a stage for their political views. Whereas movies, music, and sports once provided a refuge for people seeking to escape political polarization, these forms of popular culture are now the main vehicle of indoctrination. This probably reflects the left's nervousness that it's losing ground in the culture war. Having dominated for so long, there's a growing insecurity that the tide could be turning. Generation Z is the most conservative since World War II. That's why the left feels the urge to constantly reinforce their dogma. Politics is downstream from culture, which is why both the left and the right wage holy war over the messages embedded in movies, television, music, and sports. And the left is beginning to feel its grasp slipping. Popular culture and counterculture culture cannot be truly independent and diverse if weighed down with the onerous burden of having to constantly regurgitate a partisan creed. True art thrives when it can connect with people at the level of universal human archetypes. Ideas, sentiments and concepts that exist beyond the realm of petty, sectarian, political squabbles.
please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.